Hey everyone, this is George Carlos with another episode of Mindset Monday on Sunday. What's up everybody? It is George Carlos with another episode of Mindset Monday. And today, um, I'm building on this series, this is season four, episode four. And what I'm going to talk about is really kind of building and learning and adapting from seeing the success of others. And this episode, <clears throat> excuse me, could probably be uh, summarized by the Walt Whitman quote that was really made famous by the Ted Lasso episode is, and it's such a great quote, is be curious, not judgmental. And when I talk about the things that I'm going to share today, the ideas, the stories, I want you to understand that this is something I'm still growing in as well. I don't want any of it to come off judgmental of others in the sense that I'm also being judgmental of myself and how I can get better and how I can actually grow. And to kind of start off talking about really the context of, of this focus from the innovator's mindset. And the series has been based on building upon the work of Annie Brock and Heather Hunley, where they use the uh, chart to talk about how growth mindset looks in different categories and today obviously focused on success of others and they sh they share a growth mindset would exemplify that when you look at success of others it's other people's success can be a source of inspiration and education I absolutely love that how I went a step further is talked about other people's success as learned from and something we modify and apply in our own context to create our own success. So it's not just a source of inspiration, but how are we learning? How are we actually taking the things that we see from others and maybe applying it from education? And I've seen this uh, in education in, in different ways. So for example, uh, my good friend, AJ Giuliani, he's done a lot of work with Genius Hour and great concept. If you're not familiar with it, I'm not the expert, look up AJ's stuff, Google Genius Hour and AJ's name. That idea really came from an adaptation of work being done with Google doing 20% time where they would give people and it's kind of, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, uncertainty about this concept, but basically the, 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 the mentality of it, and I think this is what adapted from Genius Hour, was 20% of the time that people work for Google, and I don't know if they still do this, they would actually have to pursue pursue their own projects and things like Gmail supposedly came from 20% time, giving time for people to be innovative and find solutions to problems that they were really curious about. The reason I connect this to the idea of success of others is somebody looked at this from what was happening in Google and started making concepts like genius hour. So even though it wasn't specifically education related, it was like, well, this is successful in this field. How do we adapt this? How can we make this really be beneficial to what we do with work in education? And so kind of keeping that example in your mind as I'm speaking today. And I was really thinking about this in the context of my own daughter, Clea. She's, she's really into dance. She loves dancing. And because of the classes this year and uh, where she is when she was born, she actually had the opportunity to go with students where she'd be the oldest or where she'd be the youngest. And I really wanted her to go with, you know, the students where she'd be the youngest because she's struggling a little bit with it because she feels they are advanced in what they're doing in that class. And when I talked to her about this the other day, I said, I know it's frustrating, but in this class, because you see people that have maybe a little bit more experience are honestly better than you at dance right now, you're going to get so much better than if you went into a class where you are the best person right off the bang. And it might give you some confidence when you're in that class, but it might be fake. It not, might not actually be real. And so how do you get better? And there's a quote, I just shared this, I was writing about it yesterday. I honestly don't know where it came from. I've heard it several times from several people, but basically it said, if you surround yourself 
with five incredible people, something along the lines of that. If you surround yourself with five incredible people, you will soon become the sixth. That when you get into spaces where the people are pushing you, trying to get better, uh, that's when you tend to grow. And so when you look at the success of others, are you taking what they do, applying it to your own context and trying to grow from it? Or do we sometimes diminish it? And I'll give you an example of in education, how this is something that's frustrating me. And I've been guilty of this too. So I don't want, like I said earlier, I don't want anyone thinking I'm judging others without judging myself. And by the way, just as a little aside, we always judge people. When someone says, don't judge me, yeah, we always judge. It's just sometimes what that means is don't judge me in a negative. Only judge me when it's positive. So we always judge. That's just a little aside. But I remember one time seeing someone really criticize. I speak. Like I speak in education. I, I feel I'm a very gifted speaker. Maybe not the best podcaster, but I'm pretty good at speaking. And it's a different skill. And then, I, you know, I see people saying, oh, People that have it, you know, are not recently in education, trying to tell people what they should do, things like that. And I understand that to some extent is the idea of if you haven't been in the classroom and you're telling people how to teach, but you haven't been there a while, it doesn't really make sense, which is why I never tell people how to teach. I focus on learning and anybody in any field. And if we don't believe that as educators, I think we're doing a pretty bad job to be honest with you, can learn, can grow. We learn from so many aspects. School is not the only place we learn. And if you think that, then then school is gonna become irrelevant. If we don't see learning in all spaces and all times, we lose opportunities. But I remember actually seeing one person really criticize people that had left their profession, went into speaking and little side note, I know the person, I don't know them well, but I know enough about them that they actually wanted to go and become a speaker and it didn't work out well for them. So they spent a lot of time criticizing speakers. Another story for another time. But what I found fascinating was the same person really praising other people who were coming to an event, who were gonna speak, who had never been in education and saying, oh, this is awesome. I love this person. I love their books, all this other stuff. And I'm thinking, so someone who is in education that maybe hasn't taught in the last two, three years, maybe five, maybe even t- maybe 20 years, I don't know. We criticize because they now speak, but then the person who's never been in education, we praise because they found success in their field. And for me, it's always about the idea that we can learn from anybody if we're open to it. In fact, after this podcast, I'm interviewing um, a teacher who has not even taught, I don't even know if they've taught a day yet, just based on the school year, because I believe someone coming fresh in the profession is gonna provide perspectives and things that I don't know. And the mentality that we can only learn from certain people at certain times in the profession is very limiting to yourself, not to others. And if you don't kind of believe me on what I'm saying here, think about little comments that we make. For example, you can't be a prophet in your own land. My argument is always why. Why do we covet people across the world, but not necessarily people across the hall? That to me is a really big thing that we should focus on. The other, the other focus is when uh, someone on your staff goes into admin and then we make the comment, the dark, oh, you're going to the dark side. And that's not meant as a compliment. That's meant as almost a derision to that person for going into a different direction of their career. And I don't want to say, you know, moving up because I think it insinuates something because some teachers that they, they don't want to go into men. They don't want to go into any other aspect because they love that thing they do right now and they're incredible at it. Whereas some people go into admin for good reasons and some people go into admin for bad reasons. Some people go into admin because um, they don't necessarily want to be kids anymore, be around kids anymore, which is a terrible reason to go into admin. But some people go into admin because they're such great teachers and they feel they ha- can have an impact sharing some of the stuff they know. There's always different reasons to this. But when we actually say, oh, you're going to the dark side or you can't be a prophet in your own land, it's a way to kind of 
basically push someone down to make ourselves feel better as opposed to learning and developing from that. And I think for me, and again, I've been guilty of this. I remember actually one time, and I, I didn't write this in my notes, but it just kind of came to my head. I remember early on in my career, they would do a teacher of the year for the staff. And when somebody was named that, who was an amazing teacher, who's someone I looked up to, the first thing I thought when they became teacher of the year on our own staff, and this person was an incredible teacher, was why could it have been me? Like why, and not, not how do I get there? It was, I'm more deserving than that person. So I'm just gonna kind of, in my mind, give a little fake clap and, and you know, pretend I'm really happy for this person when deep down inside, I'm really upset about it because I think I deserve that as well. The thing that I should have done and would have got me better earlier on in my career is looking at that person and saying like, you know, obviously they're an incredible teacher. What are they doing that makes them recognized for being so incredible and how can I learn from it? And that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard thing to do. And I, I try to really kind of, there's times when I'm really good at this and there's times I'm really weak. And I can tell sometimes when I'm really, um, when I'm, when I'm really, really struggling with this is if I'm on Instagram and I'm seeing people who do the same work that I do and I start getting a little crabby about them feeling like they're bragging or sharing stuff. And instead of talking negatively about them, I start to realize if I'm really upset about, I'm always wanting kids, I'm always wanting adults to do really well, but when they're doing well in the same job that I'm doing and I start to, to get bothered by this, this is not a them issue. This is a me issue. And it's, it's hard to recognize that. And sometimes I can't just snap out of it. I'll just get off Instagram and like, okay, this is making me feel worse. It's a me thing right now. Maybe some, I'm having some confidence issues instead of saying, celebrating their success, learning from it, trying to apply things that they're doing. I should actually, you know, maybe it's just, I'm not in the mind space or the head space to do this right now. I need to get off Instagram. And I did a speaking course and you can, I'll actually link it down below. And I think I'm very proud of it. I, I love speaking. I love working with people. I love helping people in this space as well. And one of the things I say in that is I share lessons that really have helped me, things that I know I'm really good at, that I've benefited from. But I say specifically, you shouldn't be doing this course to try to just become me. You need to actually bring out your best self. There's things you can learn from in this course that are specifically geared toward what I do. But don't try to be George the second or George the third. Be you, but take these things and make them your own. Make them your own. Bring out your best self. Because the thing, and I know I'm talking a lot about speaking right now, the thing I think is the most important aspect of education, which can't be re replicated, is being your authentic self. That you are you, because if you're not you, people can read through that really, really quick. And, and then actually they'll... They, they won't necessarily trust what you're saying. And I was having a great conversation with a friend of mine about this, who she's entering, you know, the speaking world, wonderful, wonderful person. I said, don't go onto a stage and then be what you think you should be, be who you are. And if you, if you are, if you are who you are, and you know, obviously we're trying to get better, trying to grow in how we present information, the ideas we share in the first place, people will see that they'll see your authentic self. So that to me is a really important aspect. And as I was writing notes for this episode, I kind of write notes, do the podcast. I might write, a, I will write a blog post about this, some component of what I talked about today. I'm not going to, you know, do a transcript. I'll just connect these together. Uh, there's a concept I talked about in Innovator's Mindset called competitive collaboration. We often swing pendulums in education. When I was a kid, it was all about competition. It was about crushing other kids doing their times tables. That was like a really important aspect. And I got really good at times tables because of that, because I always wanted to win. And then we went to the far opposite side where we talk about collaboration, always working together. And that's a really important aspect. But I do think competition is a, an important aspect as well. And there's a concept I talk about in the innovator's mindset called competitive collaboration. 
And it is both being able to push and support. And a joke I make when I'm working with educators, and it's kind of like a joke, but it's also kind of a push, is I'll say, who, does anyone want to be the weakest person in this room, you know, at their job? And nobody puts their hand up. No one's like, yeah, I want to be the weakest. But then I'll say, and this is the joke, well, one of you is. And I kind of like, people kind of giggle and laugh, but they're like, yeah, like, Technically, that is true. There's a, like if you have a room full of people, one of them's the weakest, one of them's the strong. It's just how it is, and nobody wants to be that person. So to get out of that, you have to both push and support. You have to kind of be able to grow, see what others do, learn from it, get better, but also give that support to other people as well. And I'll give you an example. This is another concept I share, or another idea I shared in Innovators Mindset. I remember working with these two. Um, teachers, they were telling me about this idea of things that they were doing in their classroom. They used a shared hashtag to to um, focus on their classrooms. They were teaching the same class, and they were at two different schools. And they share this hashtag to, so they could kind of learn from each other. And once one school would do something in their class, the other students would see what was happening because they're all using the same hashtag because they're learning the same content. And some of those students in the other class would say, "Oh, that teacher is doing this really cool thing." And the teacher of that class would be frustrated because they're like, well, I want our kids to do cool things. So it would kind of light a fire into them. What was awesome about the two classrooms was the teacher in the second group could go to the other teacher and say like, hey, how are you doing that? Give me some ideas on how we can make this happen in our classroom. And the other teacher would obviously help them. So it's that notion of competitive collaboration where we push each other and I always say this, like when you're in a, when a classroom, you want to be challenged by the person across the hall because they're doing incredible things. But can you go across the hall and ask them for help and will they give it to you? And if you do that, we're on the right path. It shouldn't be, no, I want to do what's best for my kids and I don't care about your kids. So I hope you suck because I want to be way better than you. It's that push and support that really, really matter. And if you're looking at truly learning from the success of others, that's what will make us grow. When you see this, when you see what people are doing, whether it's in the field, outside of the field, if you aspire to be like them, if you aspire to, make, and this is a weird thing, if you feel a little jealous, which I do, lots, stop yourself, ask yourself, what is your own insecurity? What is the thing you're struggling with? And is it because you don't like what the person's doing? Or you're jealous because a person's finding success and you want that. And if you want that success, really kind of understand what they're doing, learn from them, and then see how it applies to your own context. Last thing, this concept of learning from the success of others, I'm trying to get better with it in education. Where, I'm, where I got really good with it was in my own health journey because I didn't really know anything about healthy eating, fitness. And what I used to do is kind of look at people in these spaces and think, oh, that's genetics. That's this. They got this because of that. And basically always making excuses on why someone else achieved success and why I didn't. But as I got more and more into the space and wanted to really take control of my own health, I started looking at some people and saying, okay, you know what? They're, they probably do have some genetic gifts, honestly. But there's things they're doing that I can do. And if I can do those things, I can apply them in my life, I'll become way better. And so I made this, I made that transition to see success of others and build on it and adapt it for myself way easier in the fitness space than I did in the education space because you kind of have an ego when it's people in your own space because you're thinking, well, I'm in this space and it bothers me that I'm not at the same place as this person. But when you actually look outside of your profession, you're more open to learn. And for me, what I've tried to improve is if I can do that outside of the profession, I need to learn how to do that inside of the profession. That's what will truly make me exceptional at what I do is I'm, if I'm willing to look at people that are exceptional, learn from them, apply it and be my authentic self. So those are just some thoughts. I hope they help you. Uh, even just talking about this, I feel like this is always a little bit of therapy for me and I, I appreciate you on this journey, but I hope I help someone out there as well. 
I know this is an area I need to grow, but I hope me being honest and open about the places I need to develop and get better might help you. Anyways, thanks for joining me for another episode of My Time on a Sunday. Have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you so much for all you do. Take care.